give me a wave. <laughs> it's difficult with the masks on, I know. This too shall pass. This, what we are going through, shall pass. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Why? Because God is faithful. Uh, you haven't seen me for about two weeks. But I know you've been praying. Amen. Who's been praying? One person, three people, everybody. <laughs> I want to just give God glory. Uh, I don't even know where to start and how to start, but I just want to give God glory because He is faithful. Let every man be a liar, but God be the truth. Amen. His word is truth. When the Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. And I just want to encourage you this morning to look to the Lord for your sustenance, to look to the Lord for your strength, to the look to the Lord for your protection, and to look to the Lord. And, and don't look to yourself. Don't, don't do anything in your own flesh. But look to the Lord to heal you, deliver you, and set you free from whatever you are going through. Amen. Hello? Yes, and so um, we've been through a journey. I know Pastor has shared a lot of it, and I don't want to take up too much time with that because this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. This is His day. Amen. But I want to give Him praise and honor. Normally, I get other people to come and testify, but today is my turn to testify of the goodness of God. Our son Josh got COVID on the 13th of November. And uh, from his best friend. And I need to say that because you let your guard down around your friends. It's true. And he climbed in a car with his friend who had been with somebody that had tested positive. Plus, at the church where he goes to, the people that work frontline had their masks off and they were walking around the kitchen making tea and coffee. Yep. And one of the main lead ushers had COVID at the time. They didn't know it. So we don't know where he picked it up and how he picked it up. But anyone that's not listening is going to get COVID. Amen. You can get it anyway, but you need to keep your mask on. All right, until such time as something happens and we are free of this spirit. Okay, anyhow, so Joshua contracted COVID. Um, he was with us, I think I shared it with you. We had to go for tests, and it seemed treatable at home. We were always very afraid for him to get COVID because he's asthmatic, and um. He landed up getting it, and they treated, doctor treated him at home and said, oh, you're young, you'll be fine, you'll be all right. And um, the lungs were very tight and got a bit better after about three days of antibiotics, and then the body pain started. Then the doctor sent very strong medication, I think I told you, and he laid down for two solid days, like 48 hours, which filled the lungs up with fluid. And he called the ambience two, week, two Sundays ago today exactly. And thank God, when he was climbing into the ambulance, there was a lot of fluid coming out, which they said was from the lungs. Thank God it came out. And um, his doctor was nowhere to be found and couldn't phone him, whatever. And it's, there's a whole procedure. Cut a long story short, he landed up going to St. Augustine's Hospital I have nothing other than praise for the doctors and the nurses that took care of my flesh and blood, my son, that God had given me. Three days of being there, he was saying goodbye to us. He was literally saying goodbye uh, to his daughter. And we were rushing with the phones because Sherlyn's phone wasn't working. FaceTiming, we were rushing 
which traumatized the little one to see pipes that were blowing very hot air into his lungs, very hot air at high speed. And it was so amazing because the one day, it was very difficult. This was incredibly difficult to do. Um, one night, midnight, I got up. We were staying in Durban, Pastor myself and Israel, just to be together. And I uh, got up midnight and I decided that I wasn't going to fear this death sentence. That I was going to speak to it like I'd done to many, many mountains that I'd faced in my life. Anybody know, faced a mountain in your life? Please lift your hand if you have. Don't sit there arrogantly, please. Everybody has faced a mountain sometime in your life. And uh, this was the mountain of death in my family. And I decided that death was not going to have our family. COVID was not going to take my children or my husband or myself. So I got up and I began to pray. But I didn't pray. I was shouting the word of God out loud. I had to shout the stripes of Jesus we are healed I had to because I had to bypass fear I had to bypass fear now I teach you that you can only teach something once you've walked it it's interesting I had to shout it out greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world death where is your sting? I had to start shouting scripture. And I started shouting. Pastor, I woke him up. Shouting scripture. He started shouting scripture with me. <laughs> the two of us. We started shouting scripture. We didn't quote it. We shouted it. We shouted. I don't know what people around us thought. I didn't care. We were decreeing. We were setting in place what is going to happen. We were setting it in place. You have to set death aside. You have to tell it to go. You have to shout out the word. And the reason for shouting was to drown out the voice of fear. Because fear thinks it is above this. It thinks, it thinks it's above this. COVID thinks it's above this. It's not. Many people have recovered. Amen. Hallelujah. And, you, and, and, and this story, oh, oh, it's just a blocked nose and you'll, you'll be fine. No, 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 don't, 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 don't play with this thing. Cover your mouth. Cover your nose. You're actually protecting the person you're sitting next to. Amen. And use wisdom. Use wisdom. Please use wisdom. I met a lady the other, this week. And she says, oh, I can't stand the mask. <laughs> and I know her. She's in her 60s. She's in her 60s. She's in danger zone. I said, you know what? Let me just talk with you just a few minutes and you will fall in love with your mask. You'll understand your mask is a friend. It's actually a good thing. Wash your hands. Sanitize. Be diligent. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your eyes. Wear glasses. Go and buy these cheap things from Clicks. Wear them. Cover your eyes. Because in wherever there's liquid, it likes to attach itself to. Protect yourself. Anyhow, we began to pray. And that day, the morning as the sun rose, we got a phone call from Josh. And I must be honest, I said to Pastor, I think he needs to change the ringtone of his phone because it sends terrible feelings in me when I hear his phone ringing from that day. I said, just change the ringtone. Please change it. I don't want to hear it again ever in my life. Because every time the phone rang, I didn't know it was, if it was the hospital phoning to say he's gone. Or but this phone call, after we shouted and we decreed the word of God, Joshua was sitting up in his bed. He had, in, in, in the ICU, 
he had what they call like a, only the nurses would know what we mean <laughs> like a little bath from a bowl and he was sitting up he says I'm starting to get better it's the best day I've had so far and I thought yeah okay right now we're talking 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 Amen. Now the deal is on. Enough of words. Enough of lies. No more lies. We're listening to what God says. And you also have to listen to what everyone else is saying when it comes to safety. You understand? There's two twofold thing here. Wash your hands. So please. I'm a mother in this house. No first lady story. Mother. Love you all very much. And I really want you to live. Amen. But remember what I said to you today. Get your, get your word of God on. Get it on. Speak it out. Drown out any other voices. Now you say, oh, but I, I'm fine. I'm great. We also thought so. We also thought we were fine. We were great. We were careful. We washed hands. Josh's biggest thing, he said to me, he said, Mom, I don't want you and Dad uh, uh, having time alone with people, please. This thing is vicious. When he got into ICU, it was the, uh, uh, a sweet old lady, and she'd been there for 60 days, and there was another guy, he was in his late 40s, and he died. Out of fear and all of that, a blood clot went to his brain and he died. My son watched it. He watched it. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible experience. You know, I think we need to look at Christmas differently this year. I think you need to set yourself up for a smaller little Christmas, not, not as fancy-pansy as we've always done. I think make a nice meal for your family, stay home, be grateful that your family is around your table. Be grateful that your family is alive. I, I know I'm going to have the best Christmas. I'm going to be the happiest human being at Christmas. <laughs> Yesterday, um, we sent Caitlin, because Caitlin has been quite traumatized. We had to bring them to our house for 10 days. Actually, today is the 10th day. But she was missing her dad so much, she, but she didn't want to talk with him on the phone because it terrified her to see the pops in his nose. And uh, I said to Israel yesterday, I think, take them down today, which was yesterday, so she can have time with her dad. And as he opened the door, because she hasn't been allowed to see him or touch him for all this time. And yesterday, what was the date yesterday? Twelfth, almost a month. And uh, she ran, and she jumped into his arms, put her little head down, and she wouldn't leave his side. And uh, they were having a little nap together, and Israel just kept taking photos of this momentous time. Especially for Josh, because he kept saying goodbye to her. He really thought this was the end, you know. And when you see pipes into main arteries all over his body, you must see he's black and blue all over his body from injections into his stomach to stop blood clots. This thing is not a joke. But I seeing him stand. <sighs> Phew. We serve a great God. We serve a great God. And his word is the truth. This is the truth, family. This is the truth. Amen. So I want to give thanks to God. I want to thank you, family, for praying. I really do. But I also want you safe. Amen? Don't let your guard down. Wear your mask. Don't be a hero. Amen? Please, family is important. Life is important. And Jesus says he gives us life and life more abundantly. I think Joshua now has abundant life. It's not about the bank account. 
Abundant life is to actually hold your family, kiss them, touch them, care for them. Today is a very interesting and prophetic date uh, for premiering my YouTube video, which I know we preached last week on Escapes from Death, <clears throat> and it's premiering now. It's the 13th of the 12th month, uh, 2020, and uh, today's date, today's message is prophetic because I'm talking about how to overcome the spirit of death. And look what happened on today's date. The Jews are celebrating right now. Esther 9 verse 1. It says, now in the 12th month, that is the month of Adar, on the 13th day. So it's the 12th month, it's the 13th day. The time came for the king's command and his decree uh, to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. So I believe it's very prophetic for me to be sharing these messages at this time. I really do. And we need to take note. And it seems I've got a, a lot of uh, material to cover. So we might have to do this over two weeks. What, what, what death is... And, and you've heard me say this before, it's simply the absence of God's glory, which is the life, the light, and the character, and including the power and the presence of Christ in one's life. Second Corinthians 4, look at this, verses 3 to 4. It talks about that um, God, the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, is, is in us. That's what the scripture says. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 5 to 6 carries on. It says, for it is God, the God, sorry, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be reading a lot of scripture. So if you're taking notes, just write the reference. And uh, because we, we, we got to give you this input and you need to take this message and literally apply it by faith. And that's what we had to do. Honestly, we had to do it. Even though there was panic and fear and uncertainty, you still hold that light in the darkness. 1 John 1 verse 5, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And you know, I always say this, uh, you've heard me say this as well, that darkness is the absence of light. Light carries energy. Light carries power. We heat things through light. Light comes in many forms. Um, even in my prophetic book, your prophetic release, I've got a chapter there on, on, on Elijah. I think it was eight times in Elijah's life that there was fire. And each fire represented a certain attribute of God's presence and working in our lives. And so light comes in many forms. The sun is one form of light. Lightning is another form of light. Electricity is another form of light. Fire is another form of light. Light can come in many ways, you know. And so God is light. So God it can appear in many ways. I mean, how's this with Moses? A burning bush, but it's not consumed. And uh, so that's supernatural in itself. That's God's presence. So the, the, the God's presence literally covered that bush, I think. And then in, both in the Old and New Testament, uh, the scripture calls God a consuming fire. So he, his light consumes everything. It has power over everything. Death is also a spiritual state of being. Watch this. 1 John 2 verse 11. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know what he, where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Look at this scripture. Therefore, in 1 Corinthians 11 from verses 26 to 32, that's why you've got to keep your heart. That's why you've got to prevent yourself from this happening to you. Um, and uh, Christianity is, 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 God is a strict God. In a sense, he's a God of justice. He's a God of truth. He's a God of right, <laughs> you know. So we can't compromise and think we're going to get the blessings of God. We can't uh, walk around in unforgiveness 
and then think we're going to receive forgiveness and mercy from God. No, if we, whatever we want, remember Jesus said, whatever you want others to do for you, you do it to them. Do unto others what you'd have them do to you. So we have to walk around living out the word of God to others regardless. Men, I don't know if you notice lately in the body of Christ, there's a lot of fighting between men and women of God against each other. It's crazy. If you, if you know certain people and you know certain things, uh, there's like a strong spirit of strife that's been launched into the body of Christ. And um, even Pastor Debbie and I, right now, we tempted to fight someone very strong, you know. But we uh, uh, said to you, you can't do it. You can't retaliate. We have to walk in forgiveness, yet at the same time, God, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I'll repay. And uh, it's just someone that keeps digging at us. People in, in ministry, very hard. It's not Pastor John Torrance, by the way. Not my pastor. And uh, so it, it's, it, it's, it's someone else. But they, yes, man, they, they're doing us an injustice, you know. <laughs> and we, we just have to leave it and let it be, you know. And uh, give them the Beatles song, let it be, you know. <laughs> so look, watch this now. As I said, death is, is also a spiritual state of being. It's a, it's a character some people walk in. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 26. For as often as you uh, eat this bread, talking about the table of the Lord, communion, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, not the way you do it, the condition you do it in. That's what I believe he's saying, in an unworthy manner. Uh, look at here, we, we'll carry on. I'll explain it. We'll be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man, obviously a woman, to examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, uh, the, here's the key, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, which means we have to walk in love toward what, who Jesus died for and who's accepted the Lord. You've heard me say this so many times. We might not like each other here. Some people might not like each other. Uh, there's different dynamics because of that. Uh, different cultures, different races, gender, uh, different upbringings, different mindsets, different education, different opinion. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and yet we have to love one another. You know, if you stand, if you get four people to stand on, the, uh, on each side of an elephant, and you say, now describe an elephant, the one person will say, I just see giant ears and this big trunk. And the other guy will say, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm just seeing this big mountain kind of in front of me and, it, and it's, it's got only one ear and, and the trunk it goes that way, not toward me, it's going to my side and there's a tail there, then the, the guy who's standing behind the elephant says no, all I'm seeing is this big you know, and, and this tail and, and this two legs, that's all I'm seeing you know, uh, different, different uh, uh, sides so we all see things from a different point of view. If, if four different people are standing on, on four corners when an accident happens, they all will tell a different story. But, the, it, but it'll be the same story. It's like the four Gospels. So we have to love one another. We are commanded to love one another. Otherwise, you are walking in a spirit of death, separated from the character of Christ, then this is what takes place. Verse 30 says, For this reason, many are weak and sick among you. That word weak, when you study it in the original, means mental disorders. Christians who walk around with mental disorders and are sick, literally sick. You, it doesn't matter if Benny, in, uh, Angel, Gabriel, Jesus himself come and lay hands on them, they will not get healed. That's why so many Christians don't get healed. Because healing is the children's bread. Why aren't they being nourished by the bread of heaven? It's because of unforgiveness or bitterness or something like that. Hey, it's a strong word, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you how to overcome a spirit of death. Anyone want to overcome death? Hello, Vodacom, Salsi, Telecom, whatever. Are you listening? And many sleep. 
Many Christians, many, the word many, yeah, die prematurely. Does anyone want to die before their time? Unforgiveness will take you to the grave before your destiny. Your, your destiny. It's hard words, but this is scripture here. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So in God's mercy, you'll still get to heaven. But I tell you what, some people might not make it there. I don't want to take a chance on that. So darkness is also symbolic for being a sinner. Sin and all its deeds, as well as every demonic being. That's why we've got to stay away from the from sin and Satan and the system of the world. Those are the three S's that, that explain darkness. Sin, Satan, and system of the world. Ephesians 5 verse 8, 8, for you were one, you were one's darkness. Look at that. The Bible actually calls a sin a darkness. Huh? But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. <laughs> Didn't Jesus say this? You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Come on. And that's why we got to show it. Let your light so shine that others may see your good works and then glorify God. So light it has the fruit of good works in it. Acts 26 verse 18. To open their eyes in order to turn them. This is the gospel. From darkness to light. And from the power of Satan, which is darkness, Satan, that's why I said it's demonic beings are darkness, to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So death is actually a spirit, the being of Satan and his demons. Remember, I'm enforcing that to, to let you know. Jesus said in John 10 verse 10, A, the thief, talking about the devil, comes not except to steal, kill, and destroy. That's darkness. So if there's any characteristic or character trait in you and I that, that is stealing, that is, that is murder, because he who hates his brother, unforgiveness is a form of murder. In fact, the Bible calls it homicide in, in the epistle of John. And, and who destroys anything, you have darkness in you. I have darkness in me. So that's why we have to always be people who encourage others who uplift people and who don't bring destruction where we go. You know that saying some people are a blessing wherever they go and some people are a blessing whenever they go. Which one are you? You know, I want to be a blessing wherever I go. That's why Pastor Debbie and I chose to do those online programs. We've been encouraging people. And I want to say to you, you're not exempt from it. I don't know why people in our church are not logging on. You know, surely you've got data, you know. And uh, if you're on Facebook and whatever, you should listen to some of the message we're preaching. It's messages of light and encouragement and uplifting. And you know, sometimes we get a little bit heavy, but it's doctrine. That's part of doctrine. You know, all scripture is for, for what instruction in righteous correction, rebuke, and uh, uh, teaching. You know, something like that, that you, we might be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Ephesians 6 verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age. There's a dark kingdom out there. There's dark beings out there. And, and, and they work through what I call human beings who are agents of Satan. Many times when I bind the devil, I bind him and I bind the agents of Satan. Because the Bible says, I think it's Ephesians 2 verse 2 and 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, that says that the whole world who's, who's not saved is, is in rebellion and, and, and in, in darkness by the power of the God of this world, Satan. They're in darkness. So we, 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 we fight against those. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in, in the heavenly places or the spiritual realm. You can't see darkness, spiritual darkness with your naked eyes. We can see the fruit of it. You know, murder, lying, lust, gluttony, alcohol, drunkenness. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of manifestations of darkness. So if, if, if you or I are bound by any of those deeds of darkness, you need deliverance. A little leaven leavens the whole lump, the Bible says. Jesus said to the rich young ruler, one thing you lack, man, 
had a spirit of covetousness stopped him from his his destiny that God had ordained him on earth. He said, sell all you have, uh, give it to the poor, come follow me and you'll have treasure in heaven. Blew it. He's rather succumbed to spirit of death. Christ is ultimate victor over death. 2 Timothy 1 verse 10, but now, uh, 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 but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So actually you and I who are, have the gospel and we're walking in love and we're walking in the light of God, we're actually walking in immortality to, to a certain degree, except for our bodies, you know, because that's the, that's the last thing that will be redeemed. But right now you and I have immortality in us. We have the immortal one inside of us. And so we need to work out our immortality until finally our body is redeemed uh, from death resurrection and we have a glorified body so we have a divine promise that according to scripture we have already been delivered from death's grip you got to know that yes some scripture for that psalm 34 verse 7 the angel of the lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them Hey, angels are more powerful than, uh, the, and remember, they're beings of light. So they are more powerful than beings of death. So they will deliver us from death. <laughs> That's why you, you, you mustn't be so demon-minded that you're not angel-minded as well. In fact, I believe you could, we have to be more angel-minded than demon-minded. Too many times we're talking about the devil, the devil, the devil. What about angels? Commission the angels. Pastor Fred taught me that. He said, Richard, you bind the devil. Tell him where to get off the bus. But then you don't forget to commission your angels to go and make good what God has promised in place of whatever the devil's trying to do against you. You commission those angels. The Bible says in two places in Psalms that... uh, well, this is one of them. That's, so there's three, actually. I just realized that now. And then in Hebrews and I think it's Psalms, it says uh, that the angels hearken unto the voice of the Lord. So when you quote scripture, like Pastor Debbie was saying, when you speak the word, angels go into operation to do that word. They are commanded to obey God's word. And then the Bible says that uh, angels are there to, I just forget the scripture Forgive me about that, but it's in in Hebrews. It says that angels are ministering spirits sent to us who are the heirs, inheritors of salvation. They are servants. They are at our beck and call. (laughs) And it's good news, man. And you want to just see the difference quickly between an angel and a demon? Well, one angel was able to kill 185,000 brute soldiers in one swoop. That's in the book of Kings and Isaiah. Then in the, the gospel of Mark, I think it's chapter 5, and I think we just read it for today or yesterday's uh, reading, uh, that, that uh, guy at Gadara who had a legion of angels in him, which is anything between six to 7,000 demons, couldn't kill him. Six to 7,000 angels couldn't kill one man. But one angel could kill 185,000 soldiers. <laughs> Who do you think is stronger, an angel or a, or a demon? And to top that, there are two angels for every devil because only a third of the angels fell from heaven. So we, we've got so much more power for us than against us. That's why you don't fear demons. Don't fear demons. Yes, I used to watch Pastor Fred mock demons. One time, it was just really funny, and I know some of you have heard this, but others haven't heard this, and maybe it'd be good. One, the, the first time I ever met Pastor Fred Roberts was in Malvern Full Gospel Church. He'd just been, he was uh, busy going through a 40-day fast, and demons were coming out the people like skittles. And there's one man, I don't know how, he got onto the stage, and he's, he, he's coming to hit Pastor Fred, no, he's, this is, that was the boxer demon. You know, the guy's doing this. He says, I'm going to hit you. I'm, and he starts coming towards Pastor Fred. Pastor Fred didn't even fear. He says to the devil, so you're coming out tonight? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, no. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, we all laughed. 
And then Pastor Fred, without even laying hands on him, he said, devil, I bind you. Come out of him. And it was like the guy was here somewhere and it was like somebody punched him, gave him an uppercut. The Holy Ghost uppercut. The guy flew, man, into the air. Boom. Hit the floor. When he got, when he hit the floor, he was delivered. Christy, is Christy here? Stand up and say, just let people see who you are and they can verify the story. I'm going to tell a story. Christy was there to witness and Pastor Debbie. Pastor Debbie is pregnant eight months or so with Israel. Christy's uh, uh, stepfather, Clive, who was a third Dan Karate black belt. I think I need to tell the story. <laughs> third Dan. He brings this guy off the street full of drugs and demons and he's, he, he brings it to me. We were at our school at the state at that time in, in the YMCA. And he says, Pastor Richard, you know, this guy just felt, I don't know how they met, I can't remember the story, but he brings this guy in for me to pray for. So I pull out a chair, and uh, it was white chairs in those days, and we have things what is called scoring stations. We pack them away there. But it's, a, it's like a, almost a cupboard that's like triangular, that and the children stand almost like a pulpit on both sides. And some students stand this side, and they mark their work. So there was one of those that was about, I would say, I don't want to lie, but it seemed about from here to there way. Might have been closer. So I put the guy on the chair and I start laying hands on him to, because I see this, I can see demons in the side. And uh, before I knew it, he stands up and he comes to throw a punch at me. And all I knew to do is say the name of Jesus. And if I'm not mistaken, I just said in Jesus' name. And Chris, are we right? It was like somebody gave him a punch. He goes backward in the air. I'm running after him. It seemed like slow motion. I'm running and he's flying and he hits the scoring station. Flat on, bounces off on the ground. By the time he hits the ground, I get there and I kneel there and I'm shaking inside. Because of this physical attack of demons. In the meantime... Third Dan special karate expert runs and hides behind Pastor Debbie, the pregnant lady. Shows you your third Dan can't help you when, when it's de demons come against you. Even he knew that. <laughs> remember, Chris? <laughs> and I remember getting on the ground and putting my hand on the guy's forehead and just holding him there and just saying, The blood of Jesus is against you, the blood of Jesus, until eventually that devil left him. Because these demons, many, we, we've cast out demons many times, and they, they open their eyes and they look at you with this violent look as if to terrify you. But I've learned you don't, you don't fear devil. Even though physically you're shaking inside because of confrontation, it's a physical fight. And then eventually the guy comes around. The first thing he says, he says, Who hit me and where am I? Remember that, Chris. He got up totally delivered and was able to share the gospel with him. Who hit me and where am I? <laughs> so it shows you, you've got to get to a place where you're not intimidated by demons. Gosh. Psalm 68 verse 20. This was last week's scripture. Our God is the God of salvation. And to the Lord belong escapes from death. So many times the devil will try and come at you and in many ways try and kill you. But we'll escape death every time. And remember, I gave you seven times in Jesus' earthly life where he escaped death. Seven times. And if he can as the head, so can we as the body. Revelation 1 verses 17 to 18. Do not be afraid. Jesus speaking, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys, the power to shut up or open Hades of Hades, hell and of death. So if Jesus has the keys, which is, the, is held by the body, the hand, and, and we did say the word as well because his words are keys, then we have access to those keys as well. Because we are one with him by covenant. And you need to use that. Death and life is in the hand of the tongue. Which are our words. You've got to bind death. Whenever you see death coming to threaten you, don't fear it. Just overtake it. Cast it out. 
uh, uh, resist it and, and deal with it in Jesus' name. And then bring in the angels to you, help us. Because I believe angels can physically arrest and take hold of demons and, and, and sort them out. Psalm 91, never forget that. It's, it's one of our most powerful reminders. So I'm going to read a few scriptures from there. This is how to overcome the spirit and fear of death. Remember last week's message, I spoke about uh, how God has delivered us to overcome the fear of death. Because if you fear death, and it has a legal right over you. Whatever you fear will come upon you. Don't forget that. So here's one of the keys to overcoming this spirit of death. Verse 1, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, not the shadow of the death, of death. So I believe the shadow of the Almighty is bigger than the valley of the shadow of death. That's why the Bible says when you go through the valley like we went, and I know Paul even said there were de- the fears and in, in deaths often, you do, but even though you're fearing in the natural, you're faithing in the supernatural. Like Pastor Debbie said, you can't figure out next year's finances, but you can faith it out. (laughs) That's what I saw. So I like that. I like what I've said. I've never seen that before. The valley, what the shadow, when you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, He's over the valley of the shadow of death. The word shadow means covering. So we're covered. Even though we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we're covered. Verses 5 to 7, you shall not be afraid. This is a command, look at this, of the terror by night, nor of the arrow, which is, you know, destruction that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, like this virus, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Look at that, all the 24-hour cycle is is covered here. Uh, Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand, and this is one of the things I decreed. When I found out that guy and Israel was on the phone and he just, uh, that was one of the confessions and decrees I made when I found it. And, and sorry for the guy that did die. Maybe he didn't have an intercessor. He didn't have an empire to stand between him and God in the gap. Fortunately, my son had, had my, uh, Pastor Debbie, I and you and, and all of the people around the world and when I heard that, I just, I, I decreed it. I said, a thousand will fall at Joshua's side. Ten thousand is right. And in Jesus' name, it will not come near him. You've got you to speak that word out. But it shall not come near you. Then verses 10 to 6. Come on, look how powerful this is. This is you've got to have faith in this. No evil shall befall you. Nor any plague, corona, C virus, whatever other coronas are coming shall come near your dwelling. Yeah, they might come, but like they came near my son's dwelling. But you know what? We had victory over it. Thanks be to God. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you trip over a stone. That's what that means. Dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, Satan and his works. The one who goes round like a roaring lion, you'll tread upon him. Twice this is in Scripture. I think it's Luke 10 verse 19. You'll tread upon serpents and scorpions. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. There's a Scripture in Romans. God shall bruise Satan under your heel shortly. You've got to apply all these Scriptures over death. Especially when, when it takes you seemingly by surprise. Because he has set his love upon me. This is God talking about you now. Because he's saying, because you have set your love on me. Watch this. Therefore, I will deliver you. I will set you on high above the valley of the shadow of death. That's why the scripture says, though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil because his rod and his staff. I see that as his word and his spirit comfort us, protect us, intervene for us. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. <laughs> this is a profound scripture. I will deliver him and honor him. 
How's that? God will honor us as, as his children. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is a psalm. I call it the atomic age psalm. I often say with this psalm, if an atomic bomb lands on my head, everyone around me who's not saved will die except me <laughs> because of this psalm. So we have to beat the spirit of death by faith in the word of God. Are you getting something today? Psalm 27 verse 1. This is not the scripture you can quote. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom? Spirit. Remember I told you death comes in the form of a being. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's the audacity of faith we have to have because of what God's done for us. You've got to read that psalm and Psalm 55 for homework. Write that down. For homework, I want you to read the, the whole of Psalm 27 and, and Psalm 55 for homework. I just having that time. There's so many scriptures that, that the Bible has that you can use overcoming death. We have already beat death from the very outset of our salvation. Watch this. John 5 verse 24. Jesus speaking. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has past tense, past tense, passed from death into life. So from the time you gave your life to Jesus, you and I came out of darkness into light and walk in the light with victory over darkness, over this plague. I personally believe that the coronavirus is a plague. It's not a sickness. It's not a disease. I believe it's a plague and it's part of the judgment of God on the earth. They have said it. Uh, and uh, even, though it's, even if it is man-made, God allowed it to come into the earth. And I know a lot of Christians are being taken out as well. So that, that's another whole message on its own. But I do believe plagues, when you read the book of Revelation, a, and you discern the difference between a sickness, a disease, and a plague, a plague is a judgment from God on, on the earth. And, and we are commanded uh, to come out of Babylon. Otherwise, God will kill us with Babylon's children. I think it's Revelation 16 and 18. <clears throat> so we have... Say this with me, the 39 of Romans chapter 8. <laughs> you, you think, what in earth am I getting to there? I want to get to verse 39, but I want to read a few verses. This is one of the most profound chapters in the whole Bible, is, Ro is Romans chapter 8. Every verse is a profound verse. So verse 2, and this is what you hear me say, this is one of the key verses I use against death. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 11, If the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal or physical bodies through his spirit who dwells in you, which means he will sustain you with life. And if God sustains us with life, death cannot comprehend you. Death cannot uh, overcome light. Okay, let somebody switch on the light now for us. I want you to just see the difference quickly. I just felt to not put the lights on yet, but now watch, look at, just look at a little bit of the difference. When light is turned on, and you might not see it on TV, but our whole lights are off. It might show a little bit more difference on my face. Look at that. When the light is on, darkness disappeared, didn't it? Did, did darkness, what you witness now, was there any resistance that the light experienced from the darkness? How quick does darkness get expelled when light is turned on? In the twinkling of an eye. That's how powerful light is. That's how powerful God's word is. His word is a, a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The Bible says the righteous are as a, a light that, that grows brighter and brighter until the coming day. 
That's, you know, actually getting, our light is increasing. And do you know that the fact is that the brighter the light is, the more darkness it expels geographically and spiritually. That's why I'm a stickler for telling you, get the word into you so that you can get the word out of you by faith and then you'll expel more darkness. Death and life is in the power. You could say dark and light is in the power of the tongue depending on what words you are saying and what word you're getting into you and living in and through. Verse 15 of Romans 8, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Fear is a big thing. Especially the fear of death, like Auntie Jezzy. I shouldn't call her Auntie Jezzy, but Jezebel came in and put the fear of death on Elijah. He ran for his life. He just, I mean, he just called fire from heaven. He just executed 850 prophets of hers. Why couldn't he execute her? Fear of death, fear of those words made him run. And then you get a guy like, uh, well, I think it was Jehu, who, who was anointed and he sorted that same woman out like that. You read the story, he comes and, and Jezebel's very, uh, what do you call it, entourage are there. She puts makeup on and whatever. And, and Jehu comes and he says, who's for me? And then he, I don't even think he finishes the story. He says, throw her down. And they just picked her up and threw her down and she died instantly, just like that. Went inside and had his Coca-Cola. And when he finished his Coca-Cola, he came out and all what was left was, uh, I think, a skull in her, her, her palms of her hands. And prophecy was fulfilled. The dogs shall eat the blood of Jezebel at some place. Wow. Jehu didn't suffer with the fear of death. Elijah did. So it doesn't matter how gifted you are, death can still talk to you. It doesn't matter. You see, your gifting is not what takes overpowers death. It's your faith in what God has said. Jehu believed God. But you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba Father. And listen, Abba Father protects us from death. Romans 8 verse 31. What shall we say to these things? If God or since God is for us, who can be against us? See, it's, it's the who again and, and the what. So yeah, we're coming to, uh, what did I say? The 39 of Romans 8. We're coming up to verse 39, which is the culmination verse of this whole chapter. But I'm going to pick it up again from verse 35. Now watch this, because all these things, the Bible talks about 17 things that try and separate us from Christ's love. 17 is the biblical numeric for God's sovereignty. So God puts 17 things, and, most, and a lot of them you see they go from one extreme to the other. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what extreme of life you're experiencing, God says, I'll, I'll, I've got you. So let's read. Who shall separate us? See, death, remember I told you, is a separation. So in other words, who, what death shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. This is the intention of the devil. He gets it right with some of us. There are some people who die as martyrs. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. The world hates us. Verse 7, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principality, no powers, no things present or things to come. Can you see the extremes? No height, no depth, no any other created thing shall be able to separate, which are forms of death, some of them, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you've heard me say this. I got a revelation of that scripture and I always thought it meant I have to hold on to, to, to Jesus in whatever circumstance of those that are that are named in there. I'm holding on to him and I mustn't let him go. No, it's the other way around. In whatever circumstance we find ourselves, he's holding on to you. <laughs> oh my goodness. That, 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 I use this a lot. Hebrews 2, verses 14 to 15. Some of the scriptures I used from last week. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise 
This is Jesus shedding the same that through death, see Jesus tasted death. Through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Clear, black and white. And release those who through fear of death where all their lifetime subject to bondage. Do you know the fear of death manifests in a lot of things? Fear of failure, fear of, of, of commitment, fear of this, fear of that. Fear, uh, the Bible says fear brings a snare. And so you have to work on and find out, and you've got to ask God sometimes, because sometimes it's a very subtle thing. Fear. Lord, is there anything that I fear that's stopping me faithing, if I can say, my way to my destiny in you? And you'd be shocked how God will show you. You know, here's one, your husbands are not going to like this. In the uh, epistle of Peter, it, uh, God commands the woman not to fear the husband. And you're not allowed to put fear on your wife in any way whatsoever. You can't bring this Bible thing, I'm the head of the house, you've got to listen to me. That's an old demonic interpretation of that scripture. You are head by leadership, not by lordship. That word head is used exactly the same word as Jesus is the head of the church. And when you look at the, one of the, the original meanings of the word it, head there, it means savior. The husband is the savior of his wife. He doesn't bring demand, cook my washing. I mean, cook my washing. <laughs> Maybe someone's having that out there. <laughs> Be prophetic. You know, both husband and wife work. He comes home. He picks up his newspaper, feet on the couch, TV on, uh, beer or Coke or tea or coffee in the one hand, and he throws out demands to his wife. Bring me this. Where's my supper? He's the washing done. Have you done unmarked clothing? And then he, then he comes to bed that night and he, 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 he's expecting this lovable thing. Meantime, there's an iceberg, you know, that he's, he's confronting. Because you can't demand uh, from your wife what you're not uh, helping her with. I always say this, that if a husband and wife are working, the husband must share the domestic responsibilities in half if not more. Because the Bible says, uh, husbands love your wives and, and like Christ loved the church and gave himself up for them. I said to my wife the other day, we were talking about something. I said, no, I work for you. She looked at me quite shocked. I said, I do this, 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 this. She just realized that I do help her a lot. And my wife doesn't control me. We have a good relationship. She, she's more of a go-getter than me, to be honest. I, I battle to keep up with Pastor Debbie. She's, she, she can work this auntie. She, she's very powerful that way. So we're not allowed to fear. Don't fear your boss. Don't fear your husband, your wife. Don't fear your children. Don't fear your parents. Don't fear the teachers at school. No, respect and fear are opposite. Respect you, yes, you respect them, but don't fear them. Don't let their words intimidate you. I had that at secular work. I worked at Toyota Perspective. And, and they, you try to use it on me. And I mean, I, I know the word. And my boss used to say, he, he, he told me this once. Because I every lunch break, we had lunch break for an hour, two tea breaks for about 10 or 15 minutes. I used to read my Bible. In front of everybody. Because I didn't want to sit there watching porno, uh, Playboy magazines, uh, listening to dirty jokes and be with a bunch of curses and smokers. I, there were no Christians around at that stage. So I, I would read my Bible. My boss called me into the office one time. He said, Richard, you're upsetting the guys. Because there was about 30 men in the office. You're upsetting the guys. I said, why? He said, no, they can't. <laughs> they, 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 they don't like it when you read your Bible. And if you want promotion, this is what he said to me. If you want promotion, put your Bible away. That's a truth. I can give you the guy's name who said that to me. Yo, I stood up. And I said, you can keep your promotion where it fits best. You will never 
make me stop reading the Bible. It's my right to do what I want to do, lunch break. If they don't like it, tough for them. Guess what was happening? Conviction <laughs> of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come was coming on them so strong. Just because, and I wasn't Bible punching nobody. Richard Gray was reading his Bible. Marking it, underlining it. In peace in himself. And they couldn't handle it because it was convicting them. Light was turned on and the darkness couldn't handle it. Don't be fear. Don't let the fear of the world come upon you in any form. Are you listening to me today? Some of you, just in that, you've been set free. I hope so. Okay, can I carry on? Let me try and finish this. I know it's a, it's a bit long, but I don't wanna, I, I'm going to try and uh, finish it in one part. Matthew 10, 28. Yes, well, yes. Like, you know, this is amazing. This happens to me so many times. I don't know if I psychologically see the scripture before, but just what I'm talking about, look at the very next scripture. Matthew 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. How's that? Scripture comes up just before that. So, let me continue. The next subtitle has refused to fear death. Turn to someone through your mask and say, refuse to fear death. Or say to yourself, man. Talk to yourself here, in fact. Say, say to yourself, refuse to fear death. Here are some scriptures. And I've quoted a few. Psalm 23 verse 4. Yes, though I walk, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That word sound mind means disciplined mind. You've got to discipline your mind to, to stay focused on the word. Don't let anything take your mind away from believing the word of God. Job 3 verse 25. Look at this. You want to hear how the book of Job came about in a sense? Job 3.25. This is Job speaking. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. <laughs> and what I dreaded has happened to me. Can you see how fear works the opposite of faith? Fear is an activator. When you fear, you say things. Because he, he, he kept on saying, uh, uh, and he did sacrifice. He kept on saying, oh, I'm scared my children are going to turn away from God. Turn away from God. And he did sacrifices for them every day. He did that out of fear, not faith. And, and he made a gap for the devil was allowed to come in. And what he dreaded came upon him. Proverbs 10, 24. The thing a wicked man fears shall come upon him. But the desire of the uncompromisingly righteous shall be granted. That's why you've got to make sure, instead of fear, make sure to replace it with a, a godly desire. I desire truth. I desire life. I desire health. I desire peace. I desire provision. I desire protection. Don't get distracted by the fear of those opposite of God's blessing. Here it is. Proverbs 29 verse 25. The fear of man brings a snare. Hebrews 13 verses 5 to 6. For he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Because the devil uses men many times in the uh, fear in the form of humanity. Threats. Like they did to me. We have divine delegated dominion over death and their deeds. Luke 10, 19, behold, Jesus is speaking to us. I give you the authority. I give you the power. I give you the skill. I give you the means. I give you the ability to trample on serpents and scorpions. This is demons and their power. And over all the power of the enemy, including sin, Satan, and the system of the world, poverty, sickness, and death. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. When last did you take that scripture and put it in the devil's face and apply it by binding that spirit? Resurrection is our ultimate victory over death. And this is what we look forward to. This is what 1 Corinthians 15 talks about, is that we must have a hope of the resurrection of the dead. And then in another scripture it says, if we have this hope, we must keep ourselves pure. 
so that we can attain to the resurrection of the dead. Don't side with the world. Don't surrender to the world. Don't start sinning and being like the world and doing what they're doing because you think, oh, you know, what does it matter? It does matter. John 8 verse 51. Last few verses. Most assuredly I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. This is how to overcome the spirit of death. I know there's a lot, but that's why I say to you, take notes. So you go back home and over the next few days, go through these in your own Bible and check it again. John 11, 25 to 26, Jesus said to her, Lazarus' sister, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. This is talking about in eternity. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? You know, the only thing that dies between now and eternity is your body, not you. You actually have life, but you've got to look after your body. Remember that scripture I gave you in Proverbs that says that if you don't look after your body to keep it healthy and to keep it, uh, you know, whatever, you're you're, uh, uh, equal to someone who commits suicide. It's a scripture in Proverbs. Revelations 21 verse 4, And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. The former things have passed away. We're looking forward to that day. Because right now, we, you can't escape suffering. You can't escape persecution. You can't escape trials and tribulations. But we go through them, remember. The promise in Isaiah, though the waters come and the fire comes, you will not be drowned and you will not be burnt. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 26 the last enemy that will be destroyed is death so so we're looking forward to that day but right now we still resist that spirit don't just surrender to death even in the face of death we had to fight for our son's life and 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 God just orchestrated certain things to come to him that helped him to fight as well and bring light to him and put it in that that spirit of death's face and say not today Not today. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 55. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death. See, death is a spirit. Where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? Isaiah 25 verse 8. He shall swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. Have you noticed some of the scriptures I read that it, that it coincides death, sorrow with tears? Well, look at this here. Remember I shared this, that in Psalm 116 verse 15, that it is costly to God when a believer dies prematurely. And in the CEV it, uh, translation, it says, you are deeply concerned when one of your loyal people faces death. Good news translation, how painful it is to the Lord when one of his people dies. Remember I told you, it costs God when a saint of his dies. It costs him. So don't die prematurely. Make sure you're doing everything to stay alive so that you can be a blessing. I've prayed many years ago because I understood and I saw preachers die every day. Do you know that? I know it sounds funny what I'm saying. Preachers die all the time. Some of them are even committing suicide. And I prayed many years ago. I said, Father, hey, and I tell you, sometimes I, I want to go back on my prayer because sometimes I do want to die, you know, with the pressures. But I've actually asked God, I said, Lord, for the sake of my family and the church and whoever else I can be a blessing to keep me alive. Do you know that you have the power to actually do that? Remember Paul the Apostle? He said, I've, uh, I'm in between two decisions, whether to go and be with the Lord or to stay. He said, but you know what is better for me to stay for your sake. So I'm going to (laughs) stay. Oh my goodness. So the word precious there means rare, costly, valuable, and of a reputation. Now watch this. Jesus only wept three times that is recorded in Scripture. Do you know that? And two-thirds of the incidences where he wept was to do with death. Let me read it to you. So, if Jesus wept at death, shows you how, what God feels about death. God doesn't like death. Death probably wasn't even in the plan of God. John 11 verse 33. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, 
And the, this is when Lazarus had died. And the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And when they brought Jesus to the place where Lazarus has died, the smallest, shortest verse in the Bible, uh, John eleven thirty five, 35, the Bible says Jesus wept. One occasion. Then in Hebrews 5, verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. The other time Jesus wept, I would say it was a form of death. When he came into Jerusalem the one time, and remember he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I tried to gather you as a hen would gather her, her chicks, but you would not. And he cried over the city. Why? Because of separation. They rejected him. Let's stand and let's just pray and hand out communion. I want to have communion against, and I managed to just finish the whole I tell you, I had five pages of notes here. <laughs> I didn't know how I was going to get through today, but I think it was good. So if someone can hand out the communion, let me just pray. And we're going to receive communion. Those of you who are watching, if you want at this stage, you can pause the video, get communion, and I'm going to pray, and then we will have communion. Father, as we come to the body and the blood of Jesus today, Father, we seal this word by remembering your death so that you could give us life, Father. And you overcame death. You said, the scripture says, that you through death, your death, burial, and resurrection, ascension, and right hand, uh, 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 ruling at the right hand of the Father, overcame death. And we thank you, Father, that by the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, we have a... Uh, uh, chiefly overcome death and all its consequences, death and all its uh, cohorts, Father, death in every form of its darkness and its godly deeds against us, Father. So right now in the name of Jesus, uh, by the body, broken body and the blood of Jesus, as we share communion together, we uh, uh, decree a, a def a, a Death's eternal defeat against us. Right now, wherever death is binding any one of us, the fear of death, the activity of death, I break its power in Jesus' name and by his blood. And I cast you out. I forbid your return. And in the name of Jesus, Father, I decree that life and that more abundantly, that the light of the gospel of your word will take place. We'll, we'll be like that person. We won't be like that person who when the demons of darkness were cast out, they never furnished it with the light of your word. Then, Lord, that devil came back with seven demons more worse than itself. And the last state of that man was worse than the first. So what you're saying to us, like your word in Isaiah 55, that, uh, that it is like uh, the rain that brings uh, uh, water to the ground and nourishes the seeds, Father. And as the scripture says, the washing of the water of the word, Father, will, will cleanse us, Father. So we, we, we take the word of Christ, the, the scriptures, we get it into our spirits, Father, and we live and act out and speak the words. We believe, therefore we speak. We decree the decree of the Lord. We let our light so shine even through our mouth, Lord, with the words of of truth and the words of justice, the words of hope and the words of light, Father. We thank you for victory over death from this day forward and evermore, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we, we ask your forgiveness. If there be any unforgiveness in us, any animosity toward anyone, Father, that we drop it now and we ask for cleansing of the blood of Jesus and that we will pray for those who despitefully use us, bless those who curse us, love those who hate us, and do good to those that have been unkind to us. Father, that our love may be perfected when we, when we do good to our enemies even. We thank you for this today in the name and by the blood of Jesus and we decree that to our God belong the escapes from death in and through us too, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. We know you received something encouraging to empower your relationship with Christ. 
Please take advantage of our other materials by Richard and Deborah. Should you desire to bless and support this ministry, please use the following details to impart your blessing. May the Lord return the favor to you a thousandfold according to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. Should you be in the vicinity of Peter Marisburg in KZN, you are welcome to attend our church service at International Christian Centre, Peter Maritzburg, located at 28 Pilot Road, Epworth. Our times are as follows. During our summer months, we meet from October until the end of April at 8 a.m. in the morning. During our winter months, from May till the end of September, we meet at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have never surrendered your life to Christ or need to recommit to the Lord Jesus, please pray this prayer to God now. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to be my Savior. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins as I ask you to forgive and cleanse me of all of my sins by the power of your shed blood. I receive you as my Savior, Lord and friend. As you make me your child today, Thank you again, Father, for the indescribable gift of eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the Lord lead you to a Bible-based church. Alternatively, contact us to be of assistance in this important next step of your relationship with Christ. God bless Richard and Deborah Gray.